Hi, this is Ebony, and in this tutorial, we will explore the features on the People page in Google Classroom and how to use them to manage and communicate with co-teachers, students, and parents. Let's start by clicking on the People page. You can see that the People page is organized into two sections, teachers and students. In the teacher section, you're going to see the primary teacher and any co-teachers for the class listed. Adding co-teachers allows for teacher collaboration and differentiation of assignments by teachers that share students. It also streamlines assignments for students and parents, and they will not have to maneuver between several classes to access work. So adding a co-teacher is a great option. To do that, you tap on the people icon in the top right of the page and invite the teacher by adding their school Gmail account, not their Outlook. So make sure you do not forget to add that GDOT. Co-teachers have the same permissions as the teacher, as the primary teacher, but they cannot delete the class. Um, they can't remove or mute any other of the co-teachers. The primary teacher can also tap on these three dots by any of the co-teachers to email them, remove them, or change ownership if needed. As a teacher or a co-teacher in Google Classroom, Anytime there's going to be an assignment, a post-it or announcement, or a comment, you will get notified. You're going to have um, email notifications. A quick tip to manage that and those amount, the amount of notifications you receive in emails is to go into your Google Classroom settings. And you can toggle on or off receiving email notifications. If you do want to receive them, you can also go in and customize the ones you want so that you don't receive such a huge amount of emails at any time. One thing you do have to remember though, is if you do turn that off, do not forget to schedule time for checking emails and comments in Google Classroom within your, your schedule. If we go back and we check on the student, let's look at the student section. Here, this is where we manage student actions and the communication with parents. And this is super important with distance learning or anytime for students. The more communication, the better. When you highlight students, you can, uh, you'll see that you have several actions you can take for each student. You can email them, remove them, or mute them. During distance learning, communication is key. And Google Classroom has lots of features that allow for the students to communicate with one another, with you. And sometimes you may have to mute a student within and, and limit the access of their communication. When you do mute a student, they can still submit work, they can reply to questions and classwork, but the option for them to reply, post, or comment is gonna be removed from the stream. This is gonna help you when needed for management of student responses, and also it'll be a learning opportunity for online etiquette. You can also inform the parents of student progress by inviting them to receive email summaries. So beside each name in your student, you're gonna get an invite guardian. You can tap on invite guardians and put in the email address of the parent or the guardian. That can be any email. It does not have to be a Gmail account. It can be any. Once they receive the invitation and they accept it, they're gonna, they will not have access to your Google Classroom. But what they will get is a daily or a weekly summary, depending on which one they choose, for any Google Classroom that the student is enrolled in. So to give you a, an idea of what that looks like, here's a sample weekly summary of a student. So when they receive this, it will be an email. Again, the parent chooses how frequent they receive this, daily or weekly. It's going to give them any missing work the student has, any upcoming work, and any of the class activities, like the announcement, assignments, any questions that you post, and only the things that are posted by the teacher and not other students. It does not include grades on um, a summary email either. Now, once the parents are signed up for email summaries to receive them, you're going to see their email address listed beside the student. The students in the classroom cannot see this. It's only visible to the teacher. To give you an idea of what that looks like for the student, on the student people page, it's just going to be the teacher and their classmates. They will not see that same list as you as the parent, uh, as the teacher. From this page, you can also email all 
the guardians or any specific guardians. And if you tap on the three dots, you can see the other actions you can take with each of the guardian accounts and student accounts. You can also click on a student name if you want to see a quick progress report of the student work. So once you pull up that progress report, this is also a good time to determine whether or not you need to communicate with a parent about the progress of the student. If you do, you can easily email them this report. This is different from what they receive in a summary email. So to do this, you would tap on that envelope icon. You can choose who you want to send the report to, student, the guardian, or both. You type in your message, hit include work summary, and it's going to send an, a copy of this page to the recipients. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications so that you don't miss out on the next episode.